All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek his aid and we seek his assistance and we ask his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and from the evil of our actions. Whoever Allah guides, no one will be able to mislead him. And whoever he leads astray, nobody can guide him. I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone, without any partners, and that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be feared. <clears throat> and do not die except in a state of Islam with complete submission to Allah. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person, Adam. And from him he created his wife. And from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. And do not cut the wounds that bore you. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching over you. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah and fear Him, and always speak the truth. He will direct you to do righteous deeds and will forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has indeed achieved the greatest achievement. As for what follows, the best speech is the Quran, the Book of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of things in our religion is every newly innovated practice. 
Every newly innovative practice is an astray, and every astray is in the hellfire. Call Allah Azza wa Jal, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْ مِنْ رِزْقٌ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُدْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ رَزَاقُهُ الْقُوَّةِ الْمَدِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, And I have not created the jinn and mankind except that they should worship me alone. I seek not any provisions from them, nor do I ask that they should feed me. Verily, Allah is the provider, the owner of power, and the most strong. This verse, my brothers and sisters, is what we need to talk about today. First, this verse, it highlights the purpose of our existence and the existence of the jinn. And that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said that He doesn't seek provisions from us. He doesn't need anything from us. Even if we don't worship Him, it's not going to hurt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is self-sufficient. Al-Ghani. And then He said, nor does He ask that we should feed Him. Verily, Allah is the provider, the owner of power, and the most strong. Allah has created creation among all living things, and He is aware of their numbers. He is aware of how many exist. He is aware of when they're going to live and when they're going to die. All living things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He provides for all of them. He doesn't forget nor does He neglect their needs from His bounty. It's known that the provisions, my brothers and sisters, are in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. And He provides for them as He wills. Everyone, each one of us, is going to get, we're going to acquire what Allah has written for us. Nothing is going to pass us. If it's meant for you to be a millionaire, then that's going to happen to you sometime in your life. There's no need to go out and do haram things. Last night, I was in Landmark making a transfer of some money. I left my wallet in the car. And out of the 17 years I've been in Qatar and having leaving my wallet or leaving my car unlocked because walidah had hummed, there's still amin, there's still safety in this country. My wallet was stolen. I came back to the car. My wallet was gone. It was only 100 riyals in there. But this shows you the level of some people that they would steal from another man in order to eat, in order to get something that they want, or try to buy something that they think they can't have because they don't have it. Only was 100 riyals was only in there. It doesn't bother me. If this person understood the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that no soul will never die. He said, Lan tamut. Lan tamuta hatta tastaqmila rizqaha wa ajalaha. Meaning, you're going to get what's coming to you. I'm going to get what's coming to me. You can't stop it. No one can stop whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. My provisions, your provisions, the ant, the fly, the fish, everything that's living must eat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sustains His creation. All provisions are in Allah's hands. Wealth, children, food, clothing, housing, everything is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. It is He who gives it and distributes it to whom He pleases how He wishes. Call Allah Azza wa Jal. هَلْ مِنْ خَالَقٍ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَا إِلَّهَ إِلَّا هُوْ فَأَنَّا تُؤْفَقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Is there any creator other than Allah who provides for you from the sky, meaning rain, 
and the earth. There is none has the right to be worshipped but he. Then how then are you turning away from him? If we raise our hands and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our needs, then for certainty we're going to find him. But many of us, we have our risk, we have our provisions not coming as they should sometimes through, through our sinning, due through our disconnection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, due to us not keeping correct family ties, all of these things can prevent the risk from falling. And in the next part of the khutbah, we'll mention the things you and I can do to increase our provisions. <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير النبي المرسلين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. For brothers and sisters, apart from us being sometimes tested with our provisions, risk, the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa taala is vast, and that includes having good health. صحة. A lot of times we take it for advantage. Risk is. Not only in wealth, but in your health, in your children, in your children. And unfortunately, many of us, we don't take the legislated means which brings about our provisions or maintain them. The first one that is often neglected is al-istighfar. Al-istighfar. ذكر الإمام القرطبي في تفسيره إمام القرطبي mentioned in his tafsir قال شك رجل إلى الحسن الجذوب فقال له استغفر الله وشك الآخر إلي الفقرة فقال له استغفر الله إمام القرطبي he mentioned that a man complained to Al Hasan Al Jadub and he said to him seek Allah's forgiveness استغفر الله then another man complained to him about poverty. And he told him what? Istaghfirullah. Seek Allah's forgiveness. Waqala lahu al-akhar. And another one complained to him, Uda'ullaha and yarzaqani waladan. Ask Allah to bless me with a child. Faqala lahu istaghfirullah. Seek Allah's forgiveness. Washaka ilayhi al-akhar. Jafafu al-bustanahu. And another one complained to him about the drought in his farm. فَقَالَ لَهُ اسْتَغْفِرَ لَهُ Then he told him to what? Seek Allah's forgiveness. فَقُلْنَ لَهُ فِي ذَلَكَ And we said to him, why did you just say that? He said, فَقَالَ مَا قُلْتُ مِنْ إِنْدِي شَيْءٍ And I haven't said anything from myself. إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَقُولْ فِي سُورَةُ النُّورِ اسْتَغْفِرَ رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَارًا يُرْسِلَ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْدَارًا وَيُمْدِدُكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَالْبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلَ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٌ وَيَجْعَلَ لَكُمْ أَنْحَارًا He said that I didn't say anything for myself, but if you read in Surah An-Nur, Nur said, I ask them, ask forgiveness from your Lord. Verily, He is oft forgiving, meaning He forgives sins. Astaghfirullah. He will send rain to you in abundance and give you increase in wealth and children and bestow on you gardens and rivers. This verse, my brothers and sisters, it proves that seeking Allah's forgiveness sends the provisions, the rain, and much more. Astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. Something you and I should maintain daily. The next way to increase our risk is salah. As salah. Prayer is the connection, it's the relationship, it's our conversation that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prayer is strengthens the heart and the soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَأْمُرْ أَحْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبْرْ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقًا نَحْنُ نَرْزُبَكَ وَعَاقِبَةُ لِلْتَقْوَى He said, and enjoy salah. وَأْمُرْ أَحْلَكَ Enjoying Salah 
on your family and be patient in offering the prayers. We ask not of a provision. We provide for you, and the good end is for the people of piety, those who are God-fearing. Ibn Kathir said about this verse, and enjoin salah on your family and be patient in offering it, means save your family from Allah's punishment by establishing the salah and the prayers and remain patient in doing so. The next way to increase our risk, our provisions, is through taqwa. Taqwa has been defined in many ways. A nice definition I found is from Al-Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, He al-amalu bin tanzil wa khawfu min al-jaleel wa rada'i bil qaleel wa isti'dada liqyawm al-rahim. Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said that taqwa is to act by the Qur'an and to fear Al-Jaleel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to be content with less, with what you have, and to prepare for the day that you depart from this dunya. Four things, acting by these things are taqwa. Taqwa, my brothers and sisters, is very important. And it's mentioned many times in the Qur'an that when we are God conscientious, when we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah, He will provide for us and make an exit. When we can't see that light at the end of the tunnel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a way out of it. He said, And He said, And whoever fears Allah and keeps His duty unto Him, He will make a way for Him to get out from every difficulty. From every difficulty, he will provide from him from sources he never could imagine. The next way to increase our risk, my brothers and sisters, is silatul rahim, keeping family ties. Many of us are muhajirun. We are immigrants in a foreign country, and we have family back in our homelands. Are we keeping in contact with them? If not daily, every other day. If not able to do that, then what about on a weekly basis? Every Friday, call your mom, call your brother, your father, those of us who left our families. Keep the Silla Taraham. This is one of the ways to increase our risk. Our religion is one that places a great importance on doing so, my brothers and sisters, on maintaining the ties of kinship. And it's placed above the level of Iman. And there is harm in severing the ties of kinship. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, A rahim, a rahim mu'alaqatun bil arsh, taqul man wasalani wasalahu Allah, wa man qata'ani qata'ahu Allah. He said, the tie of kinship is suspended to the throne, and it says, He who unites me, Allah, would unite him. And he who severs me cuts the ties of kinship. Allah would sever me. Keep the ties of kinship, my brothers and sisters. The next way to increase our risk is being moderate in what we have, meaning don't waste. Sometimes people cook food and they overcook, and then they just throw it out. Not being considerate that there are many people who didn't have dinner last night. In fact, some people didn't even have maybe breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and only had water and maybe some bread. Alhamdulillah, nahnu fi ni'mah. We are in a blessed state and situation. As some of us, we eat three meals a day, and some people might eat four with snacks. Some people aren't eating. So one way to increase your risk is to avoid being wasteful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Ya Bani Adama, Khudu zinatukum inda kulli masjidin wa kullu washrabu wa kullu washrabu wa la tusrifu innuhu la yuhibbu al-musrifin. Allah said, O children of Adam, take your adornment by wearing your clean clothes while praying and going around the Kaaba. And eat and drink 
But do not waste by extravagance. Certainly Allah does not like those who waste with extravagance. Be moderate in what you have and don't waste it. The next way to increase our risk, and this is the most important one and the last one I'm going to mention today, is to proceed towards it by doing good deeds, striving for what you want. Yes, everything is written. Everything is by the qadr wal qadha of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I said, He's written our health, He's decreed our children, He's decreed our wealth. But ask yourself this, if you want to have children, you have to get married. If you want to receive your salary, you have to go to work. So yes, it is important that we do deeds. And by doing deeds and hastening towards them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is going to provide for us. وَقَالَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ هُوَ الَّذِي جَعْلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ظُلُولًا فَامْشُوا فِي مُنَاقِبِهَا وَكُلُّ مِنْ رِسْقِهِ وَإِلَيْهِ مِنْ شُورِ He said, He it is who has made the earth subservient to you, meaning easy for you to walk. This earth is easy for us to walk, easy us for to live in it, and easy for us to grow agriculture in it. This earth is easy. So walk in a path thereof and eat of his provision, and to him you will be your resurrection. Doing deeds is a Muslim, brothers and sisters. When we reflect on how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how his sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and how the salaf ridwan Allah, ridwan Allah ta'ala alayhim and we see how the salaf were, we see that they all performed deeds, kept their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for them in the same way He provided for them he can provide and will provide for us when we trust in Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in all that is good and to distance us from all that is evil. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to write us amongst the righteous and to save us from being amongst the damned on the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring unity to the heart of the Muslim rulers and to bring unity to the Muslims in general. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up the khayr and the barakah and to avoid closing it on us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send the rain from the sky. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of our sins. We promise Allah.